Hey folks, Millspec Offspring here. Now normally I'm going to talk with you about satellite phones and having one of these in your quiver, but today we're going to change it up because I have run across something that is a real game changer, and that is the Bivy Stick. Now, this little jewel right here uh, allows you to have two-way comms uh, through instant messaging uh, via an encrypted satellite. Uh, all you have to do is have the app loaded onto your phone and whoever you're communicating with, them have that on their phone and they don't even have to have one of these. Um, and you guys can communicate two-way uh, through this device. Now, what's really cool is that it is very simple in nature. Uh, it is shock resistant to a mil standard. It is also uh, submersible down to about a meter uh, for 30 minutes without being compromised in terms of water. And then uh, also it's good from about 120 degree Fahrenheit weather all the way down to negative 50. So very robust. The other thing too is it's got this hole built into it so you can clip it on and hang it off your backpack. You can slip it in your purse, put it in your pocket. It weighs about half the weight of a regular cell phone. Uh, but this Bivy stick is amazing. Um, there are no activation fees and included in that service of unlimited text messaging worldwide um, is a new feature that's uh, SOS. It's handed through Global Rescue. And so little red button on the bottom, and let's say you're out in a situation, whether it's on grid or off grid, you decide, I need some help. Uh, you push that little red button and the rescue ninjas are coming to you, okay? So very nice to have. Uh, like I said, it can be used off grid and on grid. You can actually uh, download uh, maps uh, and use them off grid onto your app. Uh, it also gives you live weather which is a really nice thing to have, especially if you're uh, in a bug out situation where you need to know uh, what's coming your way weather-wise, okay? And so again, this you can use either on-grid or off-grid, but you can check in on your location. You can actually set, and this is the coolest feature, I know my team will be using this from a standpoint of, uh, if we had to bug out, we have a location that we go to, um, and say that location becomes compromised, well, on the app, you can actually select a new waypoint and change on the fly that uh, meetup location, all right? And so now you've got a, a different rendezvous point. All you do is basically punch in the new coordinates. It'll send it to your buddies. Uh, and when it connects to the satellite, it's a, it's a short burst round of um, information. So it doesn't hang on to the satellite and track and track and track. It only goes as soon as you hit the button, boom, to the satellite and then off grid again it goes, all right? So very cool feature. Again, uh, if you're interested in this, you can get it through the satellite phone store. Just go to sat123.com slash monkeyworks or call the number below in the description and tell them that Monkey sent. That's it, God bless, monkey out. All right, welcome folks. Millspec Ops Monkey here. This is gonna be your sit rep. It is 11.04 a.m. on 422.22. And without further ado, let's hop on over here to the board. We've got a lot to talk about today. And so that uh, said, we're going to jump into Skyglass. Sitting around 336 aircraft, at least showing on screen right now. Um, but as we break it into kind of the segments, we're going to actually tear it down and look at um, air refuelers and uh, our watch list and other things like that. And so uh, a couple items of interest just to show you, I, I caught this one a little bit earlier. This is actually going to be uh, Rico 20 doing a little Canadian spying up here on the border. You guys may see it. That's a Q4 drone uh, that has actually just flown halfway across the United States to do that. Now, remember that drone has the capability of uh, looking at, at great distances uh, from that altitude. And so, um, but no telling whether that's the U.S. spying on Canada or whether or not that's part of the Five Eyes, which is the conglomerate that allowed them to spy on Trump, right? And so uh, what happens is you have a third party because your country can't spy on its own citizens, um, supposedly. And, uh, and so we use a third party to actually spy on them and then submit that as intelligence. So uh, that's kind of how the whole thing works. It's a little squirrely to say the least, but uh, that could be what's going on there as well. But yeah, we've got that Q4. It was actually up quite a while. Uh, and what's crazy is the fact that it just flew halfway across the United States, uh, did some uh, little drone work, and then all the way back down here into the San Diego area. So, all right, let's get over to our watch list this morning. You guys can see... Um, Couple, well, we got 1E6 off the, off the West Coast. It looks like a P3 that's actually flown out of Jacksonville Naval Air Station. We got our usual spy balloons up, these NAs that you see sitting at around 90,000 feet. 
uh, that are spying on us on a 24-7 basis. And, uh, and then, of course, over into Europe, you can see uh, we're doing our regular legwork. However, I will show you, we do have a R135 that got a little bit up into business here. Uh, that's going to be the E3, but the R135 actually jumped in over the Black Sea, right up on the Russian border kind of side of the house. Remember, Crimea is right here. That's Russia right here, Turkey down below. Uh, and then, of course, we've got uh, this. That's going to be that R135 we we're just talking about that went in and grabbed some data. And then uh, this B703 up here, that's actually going to be uh, grabbing stuff. Uh, looks to be, this is Ukraine down here, Belarus up here. Looks like they were grabbing data out of, um, out of Belarus uh, primarily. And then, of course, those are your spy balloons, military intelligence. Uh, but those are over Germany. Probably those handful are watching all of Europe. So, all right, now this is going to be our heavy lifts. You can see we've got some activity down here in uh, the Middle East. And then uh, pretty active today. This is actually the last 12-hour trails uh, of flights. You can see a lot of A400s and uh, some work up here in the, in the uh, north, which is um, uh, something we'll probably see an increase on too. So we'll, we'll continue to watch them as we always do. Um, and now, um, if you look at the heavies here in the U.S., you can see, again, East Coast centric. Uh, I don't know why it has been that way now for a while. Uh, we're going on about six weeks of really heavy concentration of stuff on the East Coast. A couple little poppers here on the on the left side of the of the screen there, which is uh, California wise, but uh, really East Coast centric. Those are going to be C-130, C-17s again, heavy lifts. Uh, don't know. Don't know why they're doing that, if they're repositioning assets or what. But then here's our air refueling. If you kind of get an idea, you can see really heavy traffic up in the northeast. Looks like they're all just getting airborne and then a little bit of stuff here in the middle of U.S. and down in Florida. But those are air refuelers. That's a pretty good indicator that we have fighters up uh, over that general region. Now, what's crazy is Flashbang is not even there, which is uh, he's out on the west coast. So he's out here in in uh, Washington State, I believe. So uh, we'll take a quick look at the TFRs just to show you uh, where he is pinging his location. And so you can see he's out here just uh, in Seattle and down south of Seattle. And doesn't, I think he's coming back later on this afternoon. And of course, when he comes back, he's headed straight into Delaware. So uh, going home for the weekend once again. And uh, these actually, this is a uh, air show down here in Florida, but these are space operations. These circles you see in this one right here in um, Cape Canaveral area, uh, another air show here. But uh, for the most part, that's uh, kind of where we are relative to TFRs, which are temporary flight restrictions. Now, I did see somebody in the chat early on asking about the NAs uh, when we're looking at the balloons that are up over the United States. So if I tilt this back and you can see this dude right here, for example, uh, 80,000 foot level, uh, flight, ah, flight level, uh, 80,000 feet up. Um, and then this one here is at 80,000 feet as well. Now the location for this one is actually over Virginia. Uh, and then this one here looks to be up over, uh, Minnesota. All right. And so, uh, but these things, uh, are spy balloons military actually announced. There's actually an article written up on them back in 20, 19 about them launching these uh these balloons it's raven aerospace they basically have the contract for them but these are military intelligence balloons they say they're there to gather people's uh, information relative to drug runners and human trafficking etc um, but do know that we are caught up in all of that uh collection data so uh so yeah these guys are spying on the american citizens 24-7. Uh, and we're only seeing a couple right now, but I will assure you there are probably 11 of those bad dudes across around the United States. Just this one right here can see probably almost coast to coast if they really dial it in. Uh, more than likely, they're, they're in a smaller range, very concentrated. That's why you have more of them, okay? But yeah, they're definitely spying on us, okay? All right, let's back out of this. Let's get over to uh, the volcanic activity going on today. Looks like we have about seven of them uh, lit up right now. This one is uh, blowing some ash. That's Ducano. And then this one out here uh, is also, uh, that's Krakatoa. 
uh, east of Java. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was a B-52 reference, by the way. Uh, but just throwing that out there. But yeah, this is, this is spewing ash. So what they do is basically gives an ash alert, lets pilots know not to fly into that, different flight levels, different uh, ratings, right? That's why there's different color boxes. And so that red one on the outside is a pretty fresh one. And uh, yeah, you fly an airplane into that, you've got a, a world of problems, all right? So, uh, but that's why we show these, okay? All right, we got back over here where we're talking about Flashbang. Uh, it is Earth Day, evidently, and he is uh, talking about his bold agenda for climate crisis. So uh, a lot of it's just being created, but we're just gonna throw that out there. This is uh, uh, him making a couple speeches out here in Seattle. Heads back, uh, departs, I guess, headed to Philly. And then from Philly, he actually flies back down into Newcastle, which is what we looked at on the map. That's the TFRs, okay. All right, let's get over here to our stagnant supply chain problems. It does look like I see some movement here, which is good news, uh, but I will tell you they're on week three of the lockdown over here in Shanghai and that these boats out here, now they do stage boats out here because what they, what they have is, uh, the port in Shanghai is super duper tight. Um, and so uh, they send these guys out here that are, I guess they're called hover captains or something like that. And they basically take control of the ship and they bring the ships in. So they do do some staging out in this general area uh, to bring them into the port of Shanghai. You've got about 50 cranes in here. That's one of the most state of the art deep well uh, ports in the world uh, and the busiest port, number one port in the world in terms of busyness. Uh, but then when you start to look at the, uh, the extra stuff in here, there are probably about 10x what they normally have. You do get some staging out here, like I said, uh, but it, uh, this is way more than it usually has. Now, I do see some traffic flowing in and out right now, which looks to be good news um, because the longer this continues on, the worse it is for the rest of the world. Uh, we get down south here, you can see it is slammed in terms of stuff sitting. The round circles are, they're, they're anchored or moored, they're, they're not moving, okay? So when you see, normally you see a lot of arrows, of different colors, right? The reds are gonna be tankers, uh, greens are gonna be uh, cargo ships, okay? One cargo ship uh, average is about 3,000 containers. Uh, if it gets into the port and it gets unloaded and reloaded, uh, it takes about uh, 24 hours for them to do one ship in and out of the port, okay? kind of give you a general idea of the span uh, but you can see all this stuff is sitting there's nothing really moving in and out you get a little bit of movement here along this way which is good that's good that's a good sign but um, uh, the damage is done and uh, remember too they still got to spool up manufacturing and production and everything else but uh, again a lot of stuff still sitting which is not good okay that's going to impact us big time and the rest of the world big time okay all right, now look at the Atlas Air Flights, just so you can see the flow of goods still moving. Uh, you can see this is a pretty steady flow, 767-300s, 777s, and 747s. Those are your big jumbo jets. Uh, the reason you see so much traffic flowing back and forth is because uh, nothing's flowing on the boats. So they have to move it via air, which drives the cost up tremendously. Uh, that's going to be Atlas Air, and then this, of course, is Coletta Air doing the same thing, flying into the same same routes and everything else. So um, we'll just continue to watch that. You're probably gonna see this on the uptick and on that level for a while now, okay? So um, again, we'll just keep our eye on it. Now keep in mind too, these guys do, Atlas and Coletta also move troops, uh, a lot of troops, all right? And so uh, when you see them going into Europe, more than likely they're probably moving some troop assets, okay? All right, now, this is what tells you that the whole lockdown thing is a load of rubbish, okay? Uh, because you can lock down a city all you want, but if you're still allowing countries to fly in and out, now this is the, this is the flight board going in, out, in and out of Shanghai uh, International, all right? And so if you've got flights coming in and out from around the world still into your country, there's no way on God's green earth you're going to lock down any kind of virus uh, as long as you have air travel, you've got the spread of any virus, okay? So just goes to show you, if they were really serious about locking down, that board would be blank, my friends, and it is not. So that tells you this is all planned uh, because they aren't serious about locking it down. This is all part of the part of the big, big picture, okay? All right, now let's break away from China and get over here to 
what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, now, this is an interesting data point. A Russian general basically let it slip that um, they have plans to invade another country uh, and seize Ukraine's entire coastline. What they're doing is basically uh, cutting off the flow of goods. And so if you get back over here, we back up. Let's go into the Black Sea for one second. I'll show you what they're talking about uh, in, in the Black Sea. And so uh, Turkey right here, Black Sea is in here. And as you can see, there is a pretty steady stream of uh, ships going back and forth. Again, red ones, oil, oil tankers, green or cargo. Uh, but they're up here in Moldova. They're up in Odessa. Uh, what they're trying to do now is basically cut off all the, all the flows of goods into the Ukraine. So they already control Crimea. This is Russia over here. So, uh, which is really interesting because the reason I say that is, and you've already heard they're already fighting here in, in uh, Moldova, but uh, Bucharest is a very large area for our troops. We've got a lot of people staged in there. Same thing down here in Bulgaria. So if they start to take other areas like Romania or, uh, you know, uh, this general area, it's going to get very interesting. Remember, too, the Chinese just put a bunch of missile defense systems in Serbia. Uh, that happened about uh, two weeks ago. Okay, so that is uh, from a positioning standpoint, uh, that's behind our guys. Okay, <laughs> which isn't good uh, to have that in the general region. All right, so again, that's part of the reason why you see that from a data point. All right, so uh, it's going to be real interesting to see. I think we'll end up doing something in here and cutting off the flow of goods because if you shut this port down uh, and take control and that may be why they're trying to make a move on this uh, is because uh, if you control this pinch point right here you stop the flow of goods into Russia so could be an angle that we are starting to take but it may be why they are starting to readjust and look at a broader picture all right this war is not going away by the way <laughs> Not anytime soon. So, uh, all right. If you missed it, uh, Russia just tested their latest um, nuclear weapon. Uh, this is a missile that was actually, I think it's called the Satan missile. Uh, and it is uh, probably one of the, the far-reaching, best non-hypersonic missiles in the world uh, from a ICBM perspective. It is new and modern versus a lot of the older technology. But this bad dude uh, is... I think they said it's 300 times the size of her, uh, Hiroshima in terms of debt, uh, detonation capability. So it's a big bomb, to say the least. But uh, just, just tested that. Now, you may remember in our last Friday sit rep, uh, we were actually, um, it may not have been Friday, it could have been this week. Um, we were actually talking about um, these R-135s that were flying up off the coast of Alaska. This is why, right? I, I was t telling you, more than likely, the Russians are making some moves uh pre-positioning some things well they were doing a missile test on the satan missile and this is why we were up there so uh just kind of circling the wagons on that uh, we talked about it and i said that was a game changer uh because that means that they are you know positioning assets along in you know pretty close to uh alaska which russia is not far from alaska to begin with but we have not seen any any of our aircraft up there flying along that corridor and so that is a new move. Okay, let's look at the cyber map. America is once again getting lit up. Looks like uh, Europe is as well. Uh, this is very important because if you look at the headline I'm about to show you, the reason this all ties in together is because um, if you know about cyber attacks, you know their, their ability is, to go into a system and basically knock it offline cause uh, engines to overheat, cause fires in plants, things like that. And if you've noticed, we've had a sea of food processing plants here in the U.S. that just have burned down to the ground, uh, like 20 of them in the last five years, uh, but a lot of them here recently. Uh, but you also notice that we are also doing some countermeasures. It looks like uh, Russia's largest chemical plant just got engulfed by flames hours after a mystery fire at the military research facility. So we've got two of their facilities. Looks like we are returning uh, the same cyber attack approach with them. Basically, you go in, you cause a, uh, something critical in there to overheat, uh, and nobody even knows you're doing it. Next thing you know, the thing's blowing black smoke, and it's on fire, and your building burns down. So that is their approach. That's what we're doing back and forth. So keep an eye on that. But hitting us with the food processing 
is going to compound issues that we already have, all right? Okay, over here to Biggs Army Airfield. Now this, uh, going into Europe, was probably our biggest um, pre-positioning location uh, where troops were coming in and going out of, and it has gone pretty much quiet in terms of that. It's also one of the largest immigration facilities we have in the U.S. Um, it is a giant tent city. Still there, hasn't gone away, just FYI. But, um, but just to show you, nothing new, nothing on the board in terms of civilian aircraft. I don't see any uh, camper flights or anything going in and out of this location, which tells me that we are probably already in lockstep, got folks there, um, and we're not really uh, adding more to it. So that means we probably have a lot more folks over there right now than, than we probably thought, or most people do. Okay, over here to Fort Dix, which is McGuire uh, Field. Uh, it's up here in Lakehurst in New Jersey. Just want to show you, we got a camber flight that came in from Nova Scotia. And then that same flight, uh, just so you know, the camber flights are all independent third-party companies. It's not a, it falls under the U.S. Transportation Command um, umbrella. However, it's just a civilian asset that's chartered and brought in. And so this, in this case, was an Amerijet uh, aircraft. Uh, looks like it flew out of there and went up to Norfolk, Virginia, which is probably one that you'll see. It's probably flying down to Guantanamo Bay today, okay? Um, but from Norfolk, Virginia, and I'll show you that in just a minute, because Amerijet are the flights that come in and out of Norfolk also, or, or sorry, yeah, to Guantanamo Bay. Uh, this right here is one of our SWIFT flights. That is, um, now remember also Fort Dix is a staging location for um, our poppies coming in from Afghanistan. And so it looks like we've got a flight that's that, that uh, is en route or scheduled from uh, Piedmont, which is Greensboro, North Carolina. It's coming up here to that location. And then this is uh, another Air Transport International 757-200. Uh, coming in from Baltimore, Washington. So these two are probably tied to immigration, if I had to guess. If you thought the flow just stopped because you haven't heard anything about Afghanistan, well, guess what? It has not. Uh, my understanding is they're still bringing in around 2,000 per month uh, every month, right? They've actually, you're talking about putting together a large um, greeting center for them coming in from Afghanistan. Um, so just data point. <laughs> All right. This is going to be your camber flight, so we just talked about those. Um, just to show you, you've got one that looks like it uh, just took off out of, or took off out of Shannon, Ireland. That's this one right here coming inbound to the U.S. And then this one up and uh, took off out of Nuremberg, headed up here into the Baltic region. So, uh, again, these are troop movers, 100%. Don't know if it had anything coming back or if it's come back empty, but this one, more than likely, we're positioning folks up here. Uh, we seem to be moving a lot of assets into this general region as well. You may recall not too long ago, we actually had four um, U.S. service members uh, get killed up in Norway uh, because of a helicopter crash while they were up there doing some exercise stuff. So that was just a couple weeks ago, and now this is this. So, All right, this is going to be your Royal Air Force. This is your equivalent to the Camber flights. We just want to look at these so we can see what's going on, what are they moving, where are they moving to, uh, just to give us kind of a general feel of what is happening over here. And as you can see, uh, this one is interesting. Uh, that may be one coming across the drink, uh, stopping for fuel. Uh, normally, though, these aircraft have the capability, at least the ones that they're flying are typically uh, wide-body aircraft. They have the ability to fly all the way across the drink uh, without stopping. But this one looks to be stopping in up here in Iceland. Uh, these others... You know, you've got them all the way down here from, uh, let's see here, going to be in the Cyprus range all the way over uh, north of Italy and uh, down here south in the south side of uh, Europe. All right. And that's going to be the Brits. Now, uh, let's take a quick look. This one has dropped off. This was actually a, Ru a Ruski flight coming out of uh, St. Petersburg back to Moscow. Uh, it has since landed, so the, the screen is clear. So we don't see any Russian flights in the air right now. Again, the Russian flights we're tracking, these are actually dignitaries. These are going to be your, your um, state officials, so to speak, or military for that matter. Um, now, let's touch base real fast before I show you some of the other things. I want to show you this very interesting list 
this is showing where the money is coming from funding this war. Uh, I just want to show you the U.S. at the top. $4.7 billion. And uh, the next closest is Estonia, which is above UK, which you don't really hear much about Estonia um, providing stuff into this war. But why do you think that is, uh, that we are pumping in <laughs> this much more than everybody else? Uh, it's probably, uh, I mean, think about this. The Ukraine was actually denied to be part of NATO because of their corruption. Okay. And, and yet we are funding them to win this war like nobody's business. Uh, it just doesn't make sense unless you know that uh, we've got uh, strongholds in the, U in the Ukraine that we've been, it's been there since 1946. And so, uh, and that when I say strongholds, I'm talking about agencies, right? We have been in lockstep with them for a very long time. Matter of fact, the current president is in play because of the Kenyan. Uh, we helped them overthrow the current government who was pro-Russia. And uh, basically uh, stood up our own guy in there, Zelensky. And, uh, and so it's a, it's a data point. But boy, when you look at it on a bar graph, it sure does look obvious uh, that we are knee deep in this. And do you think for a minute that uh, we're not going to get retaliated against because we're pumping this in? So, yeah, you know it's coming 100%. So, okay, back over here. This is going to be U.S. Navy logistics to just show you the flights that are going on. Uh, this is uh, basically the, the naval uh, arm of our logistics aspect. They're just like our REACH aircraft, uh, which are uh, Air Force basically moving stuff, goods across the globe. Now, the Navy Bird's a little bit smaller than the REACH aircraft. The REACH aircraft are C-17s, C-130s. Um, these are going to be probably, uh, uh, probably 737s uh, and the like. Okay, But they still move cargo. Uh, but just to kind of show you, get you a flavor, got some stuff moving across the U.S. And, of course, the Navy is moving stuff across the drink, as you can see. Uh, this one here, just north of Africa. Um, and that is actually, you get up here into Libya and you start looking at, um, uh, keep in mind that when we uh, lost Benghazi, that the Russians came in and stood up stronghold right there. They control the runway. They've got missile defense systems and things in that region now. So... Uh, so if you see us standing up stuff around the region, there's a reason for that. And it's because uh, the Russians have pretty much taken over in that general area. Okay. All right. Omni Air, these are going to be troop movers for the most part. They do move immigrants too. But um, this, just to kind of show you, we've got a flight coming back. Looks like that one's coming out of Japan, headed up to Alaska. That's probably going to just be a fuel stop. Uh, and then we've got one that looks to be headed out of Seattle up to Alaska. That's going to stop there, and then it'll probably go on over to Japan. And then this one uh, looks to be rolling out of Norfolk, Virginia, headed over to uh, Shannon, Ireland. So, again, staging ground for us for the most part. All right. Okay. Now to the immigrants. Just to show you what is going on, you can see... If you'll notice these flights, these are all the Swift Air flights. Notice you've got them here, uh, Buffalo, New York, into New Jersey. It doesn't make a lot of sense, right? We've talked about this before. I said, why are we moving things back and forth? Not You would think you'd see nothing but stuff going south of the border, north of the border, and reverse, right? Instead, we got stuff going across the U.S. and all over the place, and it didn't make a lot of sense. However... Like I said before, we figured out that they are feeding the machine, and that machine is the Amazon machine, right? And so uh, these folks are working in the Amazon warehouses, from what I understand. And so um, when you see the flights going back and forth across the U.S., we're basically just moving people over to work in other areas. Um, and this is why the unions are so hot about this, because these are non-union workers, and they are also uh, illegals. Uh, they probably have been given a temporary green card or some type of path to citizenship, but uh, that is what we've got going on here, just feeding the machine. And then this one is actually folks being exported out of the country. And so you'll notice you've got them down to Central America, but it's coming off border towns, Miami, uh, down here into, uh, let's see, where is that one headed actually to um, Dominican Republic? And so uh, just a data point, but these are, this is going to be, um, Bureau of Prisons or Marshal Service or something along those lines, okay. All right, Guantanamo Bay. Let's take a look at what we've got going on here. Now, remember I just said 
you probably have that Amerijet coming down from Norfolk, Virginia. That's probably the same aircraft uh, as it heads down. This is a regular uh, flight. It's a Friday flight. It happens all the time. Same thing with this one from Jacksonville. Uh, these are your Legal Eagle. Um, that's an Uber for Legal Eagles coming out of Jacksonville Naval Air Station. And then this one is a cargo bird runs in and out of Norfolk. And then if we look at the board here, we do have these two, which is interesting, on the schedule. Normally, we only see one. I don't recall ever seeing two of these. Uh, but this is a uh, N82ML, which is a Citation, Cessna Citation, which is a really nice jet. And this one here is 773RB, also coming in today. But this one looks to be delayed coming out of Lauderdale. And then this is a secondary. Uh, normally, only see one. They come in on Tuesday, go out on Friday. Uh, don't know what they do, um, if their contractor moves or what, but um, just a just general data point. Now, if we look at the arrivals on the board here, let's see if we've got anything. We do have one came out of Phoenix uh, that popped in on Tuesday. Let's take a closer look at that. Uh, Griffin Air, that's very interesting, coming out of Phoenix, Arizona. And I don't have any photos, but it's a G4. And uh, more than likely, that was probably taking somebody, a bad dude, out to the spa. So uh, that is an out-of-sequence bird. That's what we look for. You look for the flights that come in that are uh, not on the regular tempo. All of a sudden, they just pop in. And uh, let's see where it went on the departure side uh, over here. Um, let's see if we got any others. Uh, don't see any. This is a Maxwell bird right here. You can see on the screen. That's going to be in 312 fu That has been popping in and out as well lately, as, uh, just in the last couple of weeks, really. Uh, but let's get over here to departures. Let's see what we've got, where that Griffin one went, not even on the board. Okay, scheduled. Let's go to regular departures. There we go. That's why it's not on the board. And interesting. Don't see it on there. So it came, but it uh, did it not leave? Is it still there? Uh, let's go back over to arrivals. Let's just do a little digging on this aircraft as we look at it, uh, get down into the flight data and see Guantanamo Bay. Um, and then there is no flight listed. It left Guantanamo Bay because now you see it over here in Port-au-Prince. So it went from there to Port-au-Prince, uh, but we don't show the flight leaving Guantanamo Bay to Port-au-Prince. And then from Port-au-Prince into um, Dominican Republic. And then, of course, uh, now it's back over here into Phoenix, and then, yeah, so it, it, it round-robined in and out of Phoenix. Uh, those planes, those little G4s, are perfect for operators. You know, they'll get on. You throw a small team on, small signature footprint, put a, uh, a high-value target on there, or HVT, and you can drop them anywhere, right? You can put them on small runways. That G4 has got a pretty good range and distance on it, too. So it's like the perfect bore, uh, aircraft for doing that kind of thing. And so um, that's why we look at them. That's why when we talk about things being out of tempo or out of sequence, um, you probably could watch a news headline and find out somebody uh, from human trafficking was probably arrested and, and brought there. But um, that is typically what we're seeing. Our human traffickers are actually the ones going to Guantanamo Bay. Um, and you don't ever hear about it in terms of news other than just seeing the flight sequences uh, come in and out of tempo. Um, and that's about it. So. All right, listen, that's going to be our sit rep for today. Um, for those that actually uh, gave one of the super stickers, thank you very much for that. I know last time I bounced out and I didn't say anything uh, because I, I have my screen covered. I can't really see the feed because I will get, I'll start chasing shiny objects. So, uh, but for those that gave and those are the members in, in the audience, thank you very much for your support. And um, for those, uh, don't forget members, we will see you over in the Q&A directly after that. Uh, you guys should have a link in your box. Um, and that's going to be it for today. You guys listen, stay frosty out there. Keep that powder dry. Things are changing rapidly and, um, uh, it's not far off before we're going to start to see some, some pretty big trials here uh, on us soil. So that's it. Stay frosty. God bless monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at MonkeyWorksUS.com.